like say everybody tells you to do one another. That's good. We want to make sure we welcome everybody here this morning. We want to welcome our visitors we have with us. And invite you back to with us anytime you can be in our area. Those that have on our sick list this morning, uh, we need to remember Eric Parker, Mason Glasgow, Charlie White, Steve White, Robbie Jean, Ray Gopi, and Lamont in the nursing home now doing very good. And I understand that she's got over her pneumonia, so we're glad to hear about that. So we need to remember all of these in the prayers that you need to pray for and help them in the way we can. Uh, we need to remember the families who saw the loved ones, the uh, women's students. This is Bruce, his wife. Uh, passed away yesterday. Uh, also, Earl Christopher, he passed away Friday, so we need to continue to pray for those families. We also need to remember the Lambo Red Chester family, the Jackson Stone family, Jan and Asco family, and Jesus Stokes family. If anybody has anybody else that needs to be mentioned on our seat, just be sure and let me or God be known and we'll get that announced. Those who served this morning, uh, Terry Nance, I have our opening prayer. Terry Ray, I have a closing prayer. Those who waited on the table to be uh, Brian and Jeffrey, Damon, Brian and Smith, uh, Philip and Terry, and everybody gets up to join them for Sunday.
each other we can and make it a permanent thing being here with us. If you're always here, of course we're glad you're here too. But for whatever reason you are here, we hope you gain something great for being here with us today. This morning, we'll continue in Ephesians and we'll actually finish it up today and be in chapter 6. We'll start reading there in chapter 6, starting in verse 10. <laughs> Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. <clears throat> Finally, with this word, Paul begins to bring this letter to a close. A letter or epistle where he has described the Christian's possessions in Christ. Every spiritual blessing in chapter 1. The Christian's position in Christ. Fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God in chapters 2 and 3. And the Christian's purpose in Christ to walk worthy of the calling that we have received, chapters 4 through 6. To effectively carry out our purpose, Paul's final concern is that the Christian be strong. In this lesson, which is the last of this group of lessons from Ephesians, We'll consider what Paul has to say about standing strong in the armor of God. Let's start by noticing the source of this strength. Verse 10 in the first part of 11 say, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. This strength comes from the Lord not ourselves. Notice that Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Paul is saying that there is strength and power available for the Christian beyond their own power. Paul mentioned this earlier in this letter. In chapter 3, starting with 16, Paul told us, I pray that out of His glorious riches He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, According to his power that is at work within us. Paul also refers to this in his letter to the Philippians. In Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 12, he says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to to fulfill his good purpose. In chapter 4 and verse 13, 
It says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. This strength comes from the armor of God. It is armor that God supplies. It's armor that we must put on. It's not something we have by ourselves. The point is, we're not left to our own feeble human strength. But there is divine strength that we can put on to protect us in battles that we must face. Thinking about battles, <coughs> let's think about the need for this strength. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. The second part of verse 11 through 13. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. We need this strength to stand against the, against the schemes of the devil. Satan has different schemes or wiles, as some translations put it. Wiles are devious or cunning strategies used to manipulate or persuade someone to do what they want. Christians should be ignorant to Satan's ways of manipulating us. Some examples of Satan's schemes might be blinding people through false doctrine. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Starting with verse 3, he says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And verse Timothy chapter 4, starting with verse 1, says, The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow the seeing spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. An example of the scheme of Satan might be enticing people to indulge in desires of the flesh and mind. Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. One more scheme of Satan might be bringing persecution on those who try to be right. First Peter chapter 5, starting with verse 8, says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Standing firm in the face, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. <clears throat> Only with the Lord's help can we overcome the wicked one, Satan. Second Thessalonians chapter three, starting with verse one, says, "As for other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly." Be honored, just as it was with you, and pray that we may be delivered from the wicked and evil people. For not everyone has faith, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. We need this strength to wrestle against the spiritual forces of evil. Not only Satan, but we battle against rulers and authorities, the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil 
in the heavenly realms. These are all Satan and people he is using and the power he has. There are demonic forces working. We may not fully understand how the powers of the dark world operate, but we see the need for all the strength God provides for us in order to stand against these forces. What is the strength that God provides? Let's continue on and see that Paul explains the nature of this strength. Verses 14 through 20, they told us. Stand firm then with the belts of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. <clears throat> it is the whole armor of God. Notice verses 11 and 13. Paul says to be able to stand against the devil's schemes so that you can stand your ground in the evil day. We need not parts, but the whole armor that God provides for the Christian. Every part of this armor that Paul describes is essential to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. The whole armor of God involves truth. First, Paul mentions the belt of truth. In that time, a belt was tied around the waist rather than buckled like we may think of it. These were not thin, pretty pieces of, or strips of cloth. A soldier's belt was thick and sturdy, maybe what we might think of as a weightlifter's belt. The rest of a soldier's armor connected to this belt. For the Christian, truth is to be securely connected to us for our success. Truth is accurate information about who God is and the good news of Jesus. Truth will hold our life together with a sense of direction and purpose. Truth can free us from sin, which can easily hurt us. In John chapter 8, starting with verse 31, we read there, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, we see it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Righteousness. Righteousness which guards like a breastplate. The belt that holds the breastplate in place, as well as the sheath to hold the sword. A breastplate can cover the vital parts of the body, the heart, the lungs, and the stomach. Righteousness, or doing what is right, is essential to protecting the life of the believer through spiritual battle. The breastplate could also be a way of identification. This is one of the clearer ways for soldiers to recognize each other in battle. In the same way, a Christian's behavior is meant to identify them to the world and to other believers as a follower of Christ. Paul may also be referencing here 
the righteousness of Christ, that justification found only in Him that protects us from the accusations of Satan. In Philippians chapter 3, starting with verse 7, we read there, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, <coughs> the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. The Gospel of Peace which is crucial to our ability to stand. Roman soldiers typically wore sandals, which allowed them to move quickly during battle, and it provided protection to their feet. Here, Paul imagines the shoes as the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Shoes made a soldier ready to run in battle. The gospel of peace it makes a believer ready for spiritual battle. Anyone who has walked outside with no shoes knows that some areas are off limits when you're barefoot. Shoes give you the ability to go almost anywhere, and shoes also provide traction. The gospel of peace anchors our faith in basic truths. Without that, we find our foundation slipping. The idea of shoes being connected with the gospel of peace may also suggest the idea of believers taking the gospel in the daily battles, sharing it wherever they go. Believers are given the gospel of peace in order to be ready for battle and to help others facing spiritual attack. The gospel is God's power for salvation. In Romans chapter 1, starting with 16, we see there, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Faith. A faith which is like a shield. One of the ancient soldiers most important tools was a shield. It was essential to protect against enemy attacks, whether swords, arrows, stones, or spears. This was such a powerful part of battle that shields are often associated with strength in the Old Testament. And God calls himself a shield to Abraham, and he served as a shield to Israel. Faith, in this case, is what deflects the attacks the enemy. The other parts of the armor will protect the soldier if the shield is bypassed. But the strongest defense is the shield. It actually protects the rest of the armor. A Roman shield had the ability to resist nearly any type of attack. In the context of verse 16, Paul says that the shield of faith can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The attack he mentions is firing arrows. This was a common tactic in ancient war. Even, even a Roman breastplate could be pierced by an arrow. Shields prone to catch fire were vulnerable. Roman shields were lined with leather and usually soaked in water before a battle. In other words, the one providing the armor gives his troops equipment perfectly suited to surviving the enemy's attack. A strong faith in God can protect us from every fiery arrow that Satan can throw at us. This faith comes only from the Word of God. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, we see it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the Word about Christ. Salvation, which is like a helmet. Helmets are essential in battle. 
A helmet can protect against stones, hand weapons, projectiles, fists, impacts with the ground, or other attacks aimed at the head. Soldiers knew one hit to the head could mean disaster in battle. For this reason, a helmet does more to protect or does more to put a soldier at ease than almost any piece of the armor. Paul associates the helmet in the armor of God with salvation. Salvation is ultimately the best protection against Satan, since nothing, even Satan, can separate us from the love of God in Christ. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul speaks of the hope of salvation as our helmet. It is the hope that salvation provides that can protect our minds against things like despair and fear. The Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Paul mentions the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is the first weapon mentioned. The sword was used to kill and defeat enemies during attack. The typical Roman sword was not a long, heavy weapon. Roman swords were short-bladed and easy to draw and quick in combat. In the same way, God's Word helps to defeat our enemies during spiritual attacks. During the temptations of Jesus by Satan, Jesus used Scripture on all three occasions to overcome temptation. Those who study and know Scripture can best strike back against temptation and prevent the devil from getting to them. The sword is the offensive weapon that Christians must use in battle, and it is a powerful one. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Prayer. The way we stay alert. After describing the pieces of the armor of God, Paul adds prayer as an important part of spiritual battle. This is not a piece of spiritual armor, but it's essential to winning spiritual battles. Prayer connects us to the power of God, which is necessary to defeat spiritual enemies. Communication in battle is often the difference between victory and defeat. This is really true when, the, when referring to soldiers hearing the instructions of their commander. We should keep alert. We won't literally be praying every second we're awake, but there's never a good time to put prayer to the side. It's a tool we need to have in constant use. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus taught that we must watch and pray so that we don't fall into temptation. When we arm ourselves with such qualities as truth, righteousness, the gospel, faith, the hope of salvation, the word of God, and prayer, then we are strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. With strength like that, we're able to resist and stand firm against anything that Satan might throw at us. But the choice to put on the whole armor of God is up to us. <coughs> Are we taking the time to protect ourselves with this armor that God provides? This morning, do you live your life taking advantage of the full armor of God to defeat Satan? Or do you let Satan defeat you in battle? If you're a Christian already, take advantage of the power and strength that God offers to us to be faithful and not let the devil win. If you haven't ever given your life to Jesus, do it today. There's no better time than right now. If you believe who Jesus said he was, that he died for our sins, was buried, and rose on the third day from the grave, act on that faith today. Turn to Christ and let him make you a new creation by being baptized. Showing the world that you are a Christian and that you're ready for battle against Satan. No matter where you are or where you've been, Jesus can help you begin again.
Whatever you need this morning, please come to the front and let us know what we can do to help you while we stand and while we sing.